Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast which we disassemble a film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe in one-minute segments and then examine it in obsessive and occasionally hilarious detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco and Kyle. Yes, sir. Today we will be having our second and concluding part Ooh. of our automobile-themed segment. I might have used segment there twice. <laughs> okay. to, to, <laughs> The Department of Redundancy Department? Did you know? Yeah, well, I love redundancy. <laughs> Did you? Uh, <laughs> you know what, Rob? I love redundancy. <laughs> <laughs> Today's topic is auto insurance. Now, look, I could, t- I could tell you. Are you about the- to tell me that you've saved a ton of money on your car insurance? <laughs> <laughs> By switching to something. Yeah. Uh, you know, look. I could tell you that the world's first insurance policy was written in 1897 by travelers. Wow. I could tell you that that policy was written to a man named Gilbert Loomis, a resident of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, by the insurance, 1897 car insurance. I, who knew? Again, totally blown away by that. This stuff is older than I thought. I'm not going to get into that. What I'm here to do is I'm here to help you in case you drive a car. You need to know what coverage you need. Yes, you need bodily injury liability. You need property damage liability. You need uninsured motorist bodily injury liability and uninsured motorist property damage liability. You need collision coverage and medical payments coverage, personal injury protection insurance, gap insurance. But maybe, maybe the most important of all, comprehensive coverage. Ooh. Why do you need comprehensive coverage? Because you need to repair costs from events outside of your control, including weather events, hitting an animal while driving, theft, vandalism, and being blown up during a mechanized drone suit battle. Because if you don't have comprehensive coverage, and if your car gets blown up by a bunch of mechanized drones, you're out of luck. That's right, because your coverage might cover an act of God, but does it cover an act of Ivan? Oh, that's a good my. question, and we're going to answer that here in minute one hundred and two of Iron Man two from two thousand and ten, directed, directed by Mister John Favreau. Uh, and we, <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> and we uh, pick up where we left off, which is uh, in the middle of the the chase. Uh, let's see, Tony is still being targeted by War Machine, like, being controlled by Ivan, who's back at Hammer Headquarters, where Natasha and Happy are trying to get to there. Meanwhile, Pepper is backstage with Hammer and the the Hammer technician who doesn't have a name, who's trying to uh, to hack in. And there's a lot going on here in 102. Uh, but we're going to try and just focus on what we see in front of us. Uh, now, and so right now, Tony's in trouble. One thing to say, and you know, I, I missed this when we talked about this sequence that we showed of the um, Air Force drones with mm-hmm. their uh, gauntlet mounted uh, missile launcher. Yes. What's really cool is. You see them on the left, but on the right, you can see Rhodey. And two reasons why you can know that that's Rhodey is one, the yellow plume. Yeah. And two, you see the huge machine gun mounted on his back that we have talked right. about as one of his weapons. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we see this. The, the, uh, the old painless is strapped to his shoulder, right. uh, which is now firing like crazy because Rhodey says, closing in on you. Ordnance coming in hot, Tony. Watch it. And then like the cannon starts firing and starts blowing up a huge amount of automobiles. Uh, and so, all right. Well, I, I guess this, you're here for this. Then I got to do I got to do this. Here's the alphabetized list of all the cars that get blown up. <laughs> so we start with the Acura because it starts with A. No, I'm kidding. I don't have that list. I'm sure somebody has it somewhere but like oh wait are I'm you serious no i don't i do not Dude, have there's the, a the 78 red trans am there's a white 74 yeah, trans am i could pick out random cars there's a the thing but i don't have all like 300 cars that get destroyed in this thing there's a bronco that's bron- <laughs> mustard colored there's a 1983 s10 no i mean yeah. here's the only thing you want to know about these cars is there's a lot of it's a mismatch of cars but it looks like a lot of like late model pickup yeah. trucks, SUVs. And, it, and from what I know of the the uh, industry, I would imagine that most of them are already do not have interiors or no engines. engines. Right. Yeah. They exactly. usually like when they get to this point, like we talked about with Incredible Hulk when uh, he smashes through those things. Like most of those cars are stripped down to almost nothing, and so do this one. So it's like they took out everything. And I would say if you look closely, probably most of them don't even have windshields. <laughs> You know, okay, because they're gonna because they're gonna put explosives inside them or underneath them, and so they don't want glass being blown everywhere. Because okay, as, as we it, learned from like in the in the nineties, glass can be really damaging to people. 
<laughs> right. There's um, well, no, the one you can actually totally see this on is that when it, it when it goes to the scene, and it's obviously very quick. There's mm-hmm. one of the full size Toyota pickup trucks. And as the pickup truck blows up, you can clearly see it has no interior and it has no windows. Yeah. It's just yeah. explosion. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And it's freaking cool. Like, I oh, wish yes. the explosions weren't yes. as awesome as they, as they are, but like, this is so cool. Uh, just going down the line. And uh, I mean, and I know it was just like, you know, a bunch of pyro, second unit pyro dudes standing back going three, two, one, doom, 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 as the explosion class one side or the other. But it looks so cool when they add in the CG yeah. at the top and the missiles firing and Iron Man flying by and war machines on his tail. And oh man, it's just like, it's just a classic superhero shot they did get a little crazy at the end right before they they get out from underneath this overpass yeah. the explosion that comes in from the foreground at the very end is a little wonky but, <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> we forgive that it's just you could tell somebody was like explosions <laughs> we want more uh, so Tony avoids being killed for the moment, uh, but then we we cut to uh, the car pulling up in front of Hammer Industries. So it's sort of like it goes from really high action to like really low action, like a car slowly pulling to a stop. It's not even like does like a smuggler's turn or screams on the brakes or anything. No, it just like casually pulls up, puts it in park, gets it. <laughs> and uh, apparently uh, Natasha has a superpower, which is she can magically curl her hair. Like she has a completely different hairdo what? than when she did. <laughs> and I saw, I mean, she was pulling her hair out, but... Th- you don't just all, all of a sudden like get a full head of curls from like undoing your bun, and even what's the deal? Even with John this? Favreau makes a joke about it. Like that's her true superpower is that her hair curls like, when she removes it from the bun. No, I, I may be I may be in the in the minority on this. I'm yeah. not a fan of this hairstyle. Yeah, it's it also seems like come out of nowhere. Like yes. and literally, like she gets out of the car and's like, "What happened to your head?" Like she's because she's not like. We've not seen this hairstyle in the movie at all, have right. we? I mean, or is it only when she's in the outfit? Like, I'm trying to remember what she no. looked like back in the in Ray's Donuts. No, this is not, no, she doesn't. And this is, and it, it's honestly, I don't, I don't like it at all. Like, it's, it just looks very damp. It looks yeah. very, yeah, it looks very weird. Wig. I yes. mean, like of, of all the, I mean, like I know that she's worn wigs in a, a lot of different of, of uh, as as Natasha, but like this of all things looks very much like her action hair. Like, like she's like okay, now this put on sequence. your angry eyes. So, <laughs> <laughs> jeez, I did, I did not see that reference coming at all. Um, okay, that was really good. The okay, so the, no, the hair bothers me. Here's the other thing that bothers me. Yeah. Why, why did we keep the cut of her forgetting what side of her belt the pickpocket tool is on? <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. It's like, even this, they must have been doing this fast because, like, this whole thing is kind of sloppy, like, in terms of where we're at in the movie and, and action. And she's in her hero, superhero outfit, essentially. She's in her shield yeah. uniform. But, like, this is her, this is her Blackwood outfit, which, by the way, this was a, a, a design choice. Like, they, if you see, there's a behind the scenes thing about the costume, and they actually did her traditional costume. They actually had her traditional, and they decided to go with the shield outfit to go there which i understand I mean, especially for where we're at in the mcu but at the same time boy that costume looked really good i mean like they actually like they actually showed her screen tests in the other outfits and she had a very traditional black widow outfit mm. and it looked great because it, it didn't look comic booky i guess you know like right. it didn't it didn't have that there's a, there's a bit of a there was a bit of a costume i don't want to get deep into costuming here but there was a bit of a costuming thing from the first x-men movie where they're like ooh, costumes bad black leather good and so we we sort of had that evolution from that <laughs> it's because it's x-men um that evolution to get to the point where we could have captain america in a star spangled outfit and we're like yeah you know <laughs> as opposed to, i mean like as opposed to having him in you know black leather <laughs> like what, what would the, if they had done the captain america movie in you know 2002 like what would his outfit have looked like i don't know but anyways so so they, so this is this was her outfit so then yeah her first thing coming out like storms out of the car hair oddly curled and then there's the she futzes around trying like where's my <laughs> magical dingus doohickey you know yes. like where's my where's my door opener button like is she she because she, later on we see she confidently just reaches down and is pulling stuff out left and right so yes. how do you know where your where your door opening thing is well okay and, and guess what her door opening thing like actually looking at what happens 
Yeah. She, it looks like she presses every button on the thing, weirdly swipes something, and then just yeah. swipes her card reader thing several times and the door opens. Yeah. And then and there's also this weird, like, awkward thing of, like, her opening the door and then happy, like, grabbing the coach. So the, their, their dialogue is, stay in the car. I'm not staying in the car. I said stay in the car. And then as as uh, they come around, Happy goes, what are you wearing? Look, I'm not letting you go in there alone. Yeah. Natasha says, you want to help? Keep the car running. And Happy, and then as soon as she opens the door after doing the thing, he like huh, grabs the door and like runs in, you know, before her. Like, I'm going to get in there too. But uh, it's so awkward in terms yes. of like how they do it for like, like what we're about to see her do to have like Happy like get past her is a little bit like, what are you talking about? And also, we okay. So, I I've I've gone I have gone into like high security ish buildings. Sure. Yeah. Um, even around here, uh, local uh, where I or one of the uh, jobs I had, uh, there was a Boeing plant. Like Boeing was a major weapons manufacturer, in addition to other avionics and all sorts of do. And they had some serious security around that building. Like you were not allowed to just like casually stroll up to their building like they are pretty serious about it and yet here it's a card swipe and a metal <laughs> door like hammer industries is the world's leading weapons manufacturer right now like i'm okay well, with them i'm okay with they, they are because tony stark is out of the business they are the number one weapons manufacturer right now we have we have, there's nothing in mcu that establishes that there are anyone else other than the two of them listen I, i'm fine with them like pulling up in front of the building like the, most of the hand people are are at the stark expo and that's fine but the the cheapness of these doors is still just like Kyle, you you <laughs> annoys forget. me you forget that Italian gelato doesn't get to Monte Carlo for nothing. <laughs> no, I actually think that is way more believable because he doesn't, he's not spending money on the things he's supposed to spend money on. Well, that's, that's true. That's, that's, I think what the, I really do think that is what the message here is. No, I'm, I, this whole sequence bothers me because it's literally like the first day of shooting. And they said, <laughs> yeah. Hey, just real quick. You guys have five minutes. Well, and he's the one in the scene, right? Yeah. He's like, right. hey, just as a joke, we're going to have fun here. We're yeah. going to film this scene right now. Let's go. Right. And this is what you're going to do. And we're going to do this. That's what this scene Don't looks worry. Like. Don't yeah. worry. It won't be in the movie. You're yes. Scarlet. It'll be fine. Like, we're just testing things out. It's, you know, we're just trying to get used to each other. There's this, no way we're going to need this footage. This is the kind of thing <laughs> that is either goof uh-huh. or someone lost a bet. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I think it's more likely like they didn't think they would actually need it, and then they needed yeah. it. And went, oh, I don't want to go back and reshoot that. So uh, yeah. it, it's 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 less than a minute. It's that 30, take is okay. Ten seconds long. We'll just, <laughs> just no one cares because because what happens in the rest of this minute is what people are going to be talking about, and right. they were right. Like yeah. only us. <laughs> and yeah, maybe this is what happens editor, when you're like, overanalyzing uh, something, but yeah, but it is exactly. odd though. I mean, really, when you watch this, it does. It's I find it jarring. Like this is a moment where I just go, "Are you serious?" But eh, it's fine. Yeah. So they get into the building, and obviously now we cut to a set. I mean, like that was obviously clearly a location thing, and now we're on the set. Um, and Ivan gets a security breach message, but why? They haven't actually breached security. Like she hacked her. Way, she did the. Beep, beep, beep thing. Like, if they're going to, like, break in, she could have ripped those doors open. I mean, they're... Oh, <laughs> I don't know why. Like, they, they cut to, like, the shot of, like, security breach alert. And, like, he gets an alert thing, too. Uh, and because, like, at this point, they, like, they, like we're going to... Security is about to be like, hey, you're not supposed to be in here. But they haven't done that yet. Like, as soon as they do, then someone could hit the alarm button and he gets the thing. But, like, why is he getting an alert now? Okay, so maybe he's programmed to just let him know of anybody entering. Either in his, you know what I mean? Like, this is his system now. It's a system that just says, hey, anybody enters the building. Nobody should be entering the building right now. If anybody does, that's my alarm. Uh, okay. I don't know. Maybe. So, so they, they obviously, they, they're now storming the castle. Uh, and they meet by a security guard. So the, the first security guard says, hey, 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 you can't come in here. Um, and this guy is actually a pretty uh, legitimate the threat because uh, this is Tenoy Reed. He has 62 stunt credits on, mm. on IMDb. Uh, he started out in basically 1995's Waterworld. Um, oh. He was an American gladiator. <gasps> and um, let's see, but see this, this right here, this, you know, punching around with John Favreau, this is sort of his side gig because his main job 
Yeah, this is The Rock's stunt double. Oh, there's your connection. Really? Yes. yes, this is Dwayne Johnson's actual cousin. And so he is The Rock's stunt double. He has been in all the Fast and Furious movies that The Rock has been in. He was in The Rundown. He was in, I mean, he's been in everything The Rock has done. He is The Rock's stunt double. Wait, wait, wait. Was he in The Scorpion King? He was in The Scorpion oh. King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I saw that I was on the list too. I know I saw that on the list too. He was in the Scorpion King. Um, uh, and so he and 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 this it, this is not even his last time in the MCU because oh. he will be back because he will be you know for him the future he will be in the Avengers and he will be in Ant Man and the Wasp oh. as a stunt performer like his like his stunt, like when you see the stunt credits he's done. It's movies you've seen. Like it's oh, it, cool. he does high profile stuff. And if you'd like to know more, you can follow him on Instagram. He is at Samoan Stuntman. <laughs> <laughs> That's all great. <laughs> so check well, there him out. you are. The big line. That is the the Rock's family. That's awesome. Right. So uh, Happy's like, I can take him. <laughs> like you couldn't even take this guy out to dinner. Like uh, so, the two of them like face off, and then they begin the brawl. So the two of them, like, because in the comics, Happy Hogan is a legitimate boxer. Like he has taken, he was he was a professional boxer before he started working for Tony Stark. So like he, that's the, that's what they're playing off here. That he actually right. is a real boxer. And Natasha's just like, later. Like, she, can, <laughs> like uh, you uh, handle that guy. I'll I got another one to do. Guy. I just want to say, John Favreau, once again, his face is doing all the acting right now yeah. because you don't really notice this, but if you slow this down and you watch this shot, so this is a camera behind our stunt man. Happy comes in, gives him all he's got, right? Of yeah. Just a total face shot. And I don't think he connects with the guy. I think the guy just sells it because again, the camera's behind him. Well, but you ha- he, he's the rock's cousin. Of course he he's sells. He's the rock's, of course he's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, hey, Rob, con- do you like pie? I'm going to tell you, <laughs> nobody sold Stone Cold Stunners better no. than The Rock. Agreed. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Agreed. I, I saw he did a pancake flip at one point <laughs> off of a stunner. It was the amazing. Flip, the backflip over his shoulder. And yeah. then, like, and the one time he landed in the ropes. And it was, yes. and, and you could actually see Steve Austin laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. The selling was. Yeah. We, we digress. We digress. So, so okay. But here's the best part is he he punches him and then the guy just like shakes it off. But you have to see Happy's face go from uh to oh, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. There's a, and there's so even a, awesome. There's a, they're also because part of um the, he's Maori. As, I mean, I'm sorry. He's Samoan. And so part of the culture is. um that you don't show feel like you you open your eyes wide to this like I, I just watched a whole behind the scenes thing of uh, from Lord from uh, the Hobbit uh, right. uh, and so they talk about like the really expressive faces and there's one shot that you can see where like where basically like where Tanoi is about to like, go after him and you see his eyes go wide is like I'm gonna take this guy apart. <laughs> Let me just tell you so something. Good. Happy does the opposite of that in this yeah. moment. He gets the first shot in and he's just like, oh, I'm done. And you have to look at Scarlett Johansson because yeah. as this happens, she just gives the whole, yeah, yeah. you're... <laughs> Yeah. I don't got to worry about you now. Nope. <laughs> You're not so, going to be a problem. So this is this is what's great. Okay, so we're about to see the first Black Widow fight right. scene. Uh, and it's pretty, like, what I love about this, not only is, is one where I'm going to talk, you know, I'm going to say nothing but love for Heidi Moneymaker, who did all this stuff, but also John Favreau said, uh, he talked about her in the commentary, and then also talked about Scarlett, and he was really impressed at how much Scarlett was able to do. Like because they would set up these scenarios and like you actors you don't know if they actually are able going to be able to pull this kind of stuff off and obviously we're now here here we are in you know twi- past the ten year anniversary of the movie we know what she can do but at the time Scarlett Johansson was not known for this she was not known for Lucy or you know all the stuff of the, the oh, chair yeah. fight of the Avengers or any of this kind of stuff I mean she was sort of more of a prestige Hollywood girl. Uh, so to see that she actually could do this, yeah, it's pretty impressive. So what I like about this is that you never really know what Black Widow is going to do. I mean, with a lot of the fight scenes, like with you know Captain America going in, you kind of know 
his moves. Like you kind of know, like Shield's coming. You know, he's gonna, he's going to have his fisticuffs too. But like Black Widow always keeps you guessing because even here, she sees a couple. She sees the guy coming at it, and so what does she do? Immediately slides down and throws out these these taser discs and electrifies the guy. Like, oh, oh, okay, all right, we're not going with, you know, punching or shooting or any of that kind of stuff. We uh, got those. I didn't even know you had those. Uh, and I even tried to find if there's an official name for these, and there really isn't. Uh, somebody on the Marvel Cinematic Universe wiki just called them taser discs because we're going to see them again, not only in the rest of this fight scene, but also later on. Like, she uses one of these against Winter Soldier to shut down his arm. Like, she carries these discs for the rest of her, her career, essentially. Right. Um, so then, yeah, the, the, she, the, she goes through the second guard. Um, she then, as she goes running, she's running on the hallway. Like, it's interesting also that she's basically just like going targets of opportunity because she doesn't know where she's going. Right. Like, she's never been to this building. She has no idea where Ivan is or, or the layout of this place. It's sort of just like, all right, I'll uh, take out all these dudes and then I'll sort of look for where he's supposed to be. So her first move then uh, when the guy comes running out is she vaults off of a rolling cart. It's really <laughs> impressive because also I would be worried about that thing rolling away when you went over it. But right. she like vaults off of it uh, and then it goes right into the guy. And that's pretty much where the minute ends. Yeah, she does a... Uh You'd almost say it's like a missile drop kick yes. off the cart, off of off of her momentum in the roll off the cart. Yeah. She then a two foot drop kick right to this guy. That guy's going to feel that for a week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, doesn't just, even, he doesn't even hit the floor, I think, before the minute ends. Yeah. No, no, exactly. We just, well, we see her create kind of create like a, she looks down at him. So there's like a reference that he's already down on the ground. Yeah. And then she, she stops and then she takes off. We do get a great shot of uh, in full light of her uniform, and it's nice. You can see it. It's like a really deep midnight navy. Mm -hmm. She's got some sort of gauntlets. Uh, but don't really got, come into play very uh, very much. Yeah, no, those we, those we don't. But yeah. you can. But you see though, there's there's yeah. a lot to the suit in terms of your utility belt, yeah, and you see the, the really cool the, the shield, matte logo, black on shield her, logo. Yeah, on her shoulder. Exactly. Like you can see the. Yeah, it's, it's it's very subtle, so it's not even like gold briquet or anything. No, totally. Uh, but it's nicely done, though. And, and again, because we see it now in the full lights, so we can see all the detail of that. Uh, and just this is interspersed with, yeah, the the fight between Happy and the Rock's stunt double is <laughs> is still going on. Uh, one thing just to note that I, I you do pick this up again if you see it. There is a scene where um, when she throws out the taser discs and the guy who unfortunately is on the, the receiving end of those. Mm -hmm. um, if you look in the background, you can clearly tell that is not John Favreau. In oh, place of happy. <laughs> yeah, that is clearly it's, someone it's else. I mean, yeah. it, you would notice it if you weren't stopping it, but it's clearly other it's other stunt people doing. I, that, and that I believe segment. his stunt double was, was one of the soldiers that I even killed oh. in the room. Like one of those, like there's the older guy and the younger guy. This is the younger guy. Oh, yeah, because well, he's going to show Again, up. I don't have the, in, I don't have the name in front of me, but like we, we talked about him when we were when we right. were talking about the, the intimidation scene with uh, right. uh, Hammer and the and his two guards. Right. Is this hallway, is this SpaceX or is this a set? This is a set. Oh, it's a set. Okay. Because it does have the look of, it has, it, it's a really good mix. Of, yeah, of because, match, they're gonna, because they're going to tear it up, you know, right. so they, <laughs> they don't want to take a chance of having to repair anything. Well, you know, Elon yeah. Musk There's is a... not, is, is, is used to repairing things that have blown up. <laughs> oh, oh! Hey, oh. <laughs> boom. And all <laughs> lawsuits can be directed to at <laughs> Rob Cabosco. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh I said some stuff too. He's, He'll come yeah, after both fine. of us. He could it's buy fine. and sell us six times before Sunday. <laughs> <Jeez>. uh, <laughs> but you know, the nice thing about these, the our our, our American billionaires is, is they're not litigious at all. So, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they'll have our, you know uh, full heads of hair and you know happy lives. So, <laughs> yes. Man, and that's where our minute ends. Man, so. that's where I'm literally where our minute ends. Uh, so yeah, it's, so the fight scene is just getting started. Uh, so you know, don't go anywhere because we're gonna we're gonna do a, a, as much color commentary, move by move, as we can do as we progress over these couple minutes. Um, so Natasha Romanoff didn't really have much trouble getting into Hammer Industries, even though it is a private place that she wanted to go to. But the, 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 the but they did have a rudimentary thing to get through. Because there's important stuff going on there, like big conversations, big ideas are happening there, but you have to be able to get through the door. In the same way, uh, we have a area on Facebook, much the same thing, where we have interesting thoughts and ideas and discussions going on. It's called the Marvel Movie Minute to Next Real Film Podcast Executive Lounge. And just like Hammer Industries, we have a really easy system for getting through. 
was going to say. You know all, what you just did? But all yes, you, you have do. to do is ask. Yeah, basically, go on, find the group, ask to join. We'll let you in. I, I actually, uh, this, this week, I just let in another Movie Minute podcast. They asked to join in. I'm like, hey, great. Come in. Talk to us about how you do your show. Super fun. Uh, so if you go to Facebook.com slash groups slash The Next Reel, you'll find the Marvel Movie Minute Next Reel Film Podcast Executive Lounge. You can ask to join, uh, and we will uh, we will approve it. As long as you're not a bot or a weirdo. Can I also make a suggestion? Please. Don't be, like, happy. Don't get in, and the first thing you do is throw a punch. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's, it's, it's This is the executive lounge. You've made it to the promised land. Like, sit back, chill, post a meme. Like, it's cool, baby. <laughs> We're all cool here. That would be funny, though. If someone decided to do that after listening to that, kudos, but please don't. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's that's it for Minute 102. We'll be back here for Minute 103, where we're going to be talking about flying marines and where the heck is Grid W? Ooh. Enough said. Bye.